Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Lisa. Some of you might know me from Lisa Bogahami Photography. As many of you know that um, Ramadan is right around the corner and I wanted to make this video to talk about why Islam is the true religion and why I converted to this religion. Um, I've had the opportunity to explain how I started to research the religion, but I never really explained why this is the true religion. Okay, so I want to start and say I apologize right off the bat if at all I offend anybody. My purpose is to not offend anyone. My purpose is just to speak the truth and why I converted to this religion. So, Bismillah. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is Jesus. And I want to start talking about um, how I had such a strong and firm belief in Christianity. I actually still believe in Jesus. I believe he was sent by God. I believe he was born a virgin birth. I believe he was a messenger of God, and I believe he will come again. Um, and that's exactly what Islam teaches. So my belief in Jesus actually didn't change. I just started to follow what Jesus really taught. Let's look at the idea of the Trinity. Uh, in Christianity, they uh, believe in the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, Christianity, on the other hand, also teaches one God. So let's look at that. Is the Trinity three all in one? it's all together or is the father and the son of god two separate things now if they're two separate things that means that the son of god and god are two totally different and you should not be praying to jesus you should be praying to god okay so now let's also look at the trinity if they're all in one that means that god sent himself down in the human flesh to deliver the message and then he crucified himself, sacrificed himself to forgive you and for, to forgive me. So I had a huge problem with that when I was a Christian. I, I started questioning this because why is God powerful enough to create the universe and powerful enough to create me and you, but he's not powerful enough to forgive you or forgive me? So that's something that I had a huge question when I started really looking into Christianity. Jesus never spoke about the Trinity. The Trinity was actually taught by Paul, which who never even met Jesus, and had a dream about the Trinity. So Jesus never once spoke about the Trinity. Please look in the Bible, you will not find the word Trinity not once in the Bible. And also with the idea of the term Son of God, where we were taught that Jesus is the only Son of God. However, the Bible contradicts that idea because if you look in the Bible, you'll see a verse that says, I believe it's in Genesis, Adam, O Son of God. The term Son of God was actually a very common term, and that means somebody of high status. So please, I encourage you to look for these, these verses in the Bible where it contradicts what is actually taught today. And I also want to have the idea of the the Bible was not even written in Jesus' time, which means that we don't even know what's correct of the Bible today as it's been mistranslated, it's been re re-recorded, changed. Christian scholars will confirm this information. Then I started to question about what happens to everybody before Jesus came. Because if Jesus came to forgive your sins, well then what happened to everybody before that? I also questioned that if if in order the only way through salvation is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what happens to children? At what age is it okay to say that you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I also questioned what happens if the Bible was never brought to you? And then the biggest question I had was what happens to everybody that accepts Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but then you have, you live a sinful life and you kill and you steal and you have adultery. Are you then forgiven and you go straight to heaven? These are the questions that I had with Christianity and it's what Islam answered for me. In Islam, children go to heaven. In Islam, you're judged by your sins and by your good deeds on this earth, and if you believe in one God. The difference between Islam and Christianity is we believe that Jesus was sent by God, but we know that he was a prophet and not the Son of God. He, he delivered the message of God. But we are to not pray to Jesus. We are to pray to God. There are two separate... God, God is God, and Jesus was a person. And Jesus was God's creation. Now, finding faults in what's taught today in Christianity is not a reason to convert to Islam. 
The reason to convert to Islam is because all of the miracles and proof that God gave us that the Quran is the word of God. Now, when I first started learning about Islam, I thought, well, what are the miracles of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Because Jesus had so many amazing miracles. He walked on water, he healed, he healed the blind. And then we find out that the book is the miracle of the Prophet's time. But the book of the Quran, the Holy Quran. And then when you think about it, you're like, well, what's so special about a book? It's just a book. Well, when you start to learn about the Quran, you realize that the book in itself is a miracle. In Islam, God promised to protect the Quran and it would not be changed. And the word of God was recorded 1400 years ago and not one punctuation has been changed. A miracle of this book is that millions of people all around the world, people that don't even speak Arabic, the language that the Quran was written in, have memorized this book from cover to cover. That is a miracle in itself. Little children have memorized this book from cover to cover. Me, I don't speak Arabic, but yet I've memorized surahs. And that's amazing in itself to be able to memorize chapters in a language that I don't even speak or understand. And the reason we know that the book has not been changed is that there are two copies that have been kept and preserved. And we can always reference back to the word, to the original text to see if it has ever been changed, which it hasn't. And then we also have to recognize that this is, if all the books in the world were, were destroyed, the Quran is the only book in the entire world that would survive. Why? Because again, it's in the hearts of millions and they've memorized it from cover to cover. Then I also want to talk about science. A lot of Christians, you know, will kind of brush aside that Christianity and the Bible contradicts of what science shows us today and it claims that the earth is around 8,000 years old well we know that not to be true however um they however the quran actually not only supports science or does not contradict it it supports it as it even has scientific facts in the quran now we don't want to claim that the that the quran is this like scientific book however it has so many verses in the Quran that have scientific facts and there'd be no way that a prophet would know this 1400 years ago unless it was the true word of God. Now two of the one of the most incredible uh, verses in the Quran that supports science um, that I find amazing. One is uh, Surah 30 uh, verse 2 through 4. You'll see where it says the Romans have de have been defeated in the lowest land, and it's actually talking about uh, a battle that took place um, in Israel near Israel and Jordan. And the amazing part about it is that that actually is the lowest point in the earth. Now, again, how would a prophet know this, or a man, excuse me, a man know this 1,400 years ago if he weren't a prophet of God? Another amazing uh, verse in the Quran is talking about how fresh water does not mix with uh, salt water and as we know that to be true and it says in the Quran he has set has set free the two seas meeting together there is a barrier between them they do not transgress now we have a prophet or in the middle of the desert that would have for sure not have this information so this is another proof that the Quran is from God another thing that drew me to this religion was that the idea that there are no chosen people in other religions, you have chosen people that are given superiority. However, in Islam, everybody is equal. Whether you are a man, a woman, Asian, black, white, Hispanic, doesn't matter. You are judged based on your actions on this earth and if you believe in one God. And again, I, that was an issue that I had in Christianity because I always wondered what happened to, what happens to everybody that lives a sinful life? But yet, if they just accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, why are they given preference over those who live a whole life doing good deeds on this earth? And lastly, I want to talk about um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was prophesied by Prophet Moses. Prophet Muhammad, if you look into the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, he's actually prophesied. It says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I should command him. Now, Christians will say they're talking, this verse is talking about Jesus. 
Muslims believe that this is talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, let's look at the Christian um, argument. This is talking about Jesus. This verse says that it, there will be a prophet to come. Now, if this is talking about Jesus, well then this is now saying that Jesus is a prophet and not the Son of God. So that completely contradicts the idea that this is talking about Jesus. Then it says a prophet will come like Moses. That's what it's talking about. But let's look at Prophet Muhammad and Moses compared to each other versus Jesus and Moses compared to each other. Now, Prophet Muhammad and Moses, they're both they're both were orphans. They were both born from a mother and a father, a, a, a natural mother and a father, not a, not a not a virgin birth. They were both illiterate, and they were both the only prophets that spoke directly to God. Let's look at Jesus. He was born a virgin birth. He was a very educated man. He was he was not an orphan. He had he had a. Uh, Mary and Joseph to him. So it's clear that this verse is talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, there's so many other amazing things about Islam, and I wanted to cover just a few of the reasons why I knew that this was the religion of God. And again, I apologize if I offended anybody um, in this video. I just want to speak the truth and explain to you why I converted. So um, if you do have questions, please feel free to email me. Um, you can comment below. I will do my best to answer them, and if I don't know the answer, I will try to direct you in a in the way um for somebody that can. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.